Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's time to get into the fun stuff, starting with the thumb. Injuries to the thumb most commonly affect our ability to perform gripping activities due to discomfort and weakness. Our opposable thumbs allow us to manipulate our environments better than any other animal on the planet. But as dysfunction progresses, most commonly due to overuse injuries with age, we begin to lose our ability to manipulate our surroundings. In fact, many avoid important activities as they know it will cause pain flare-ups or they might drop items that could cause injuries or break valuables. The most common conventional ways of treating this type of injury are to prevent movement for days to weeks using splints, limit activity, injections, medications, job changes, and even surgery. However, with the majority of these interventions, all we are really doing is working to manage the symptoms as the most common underlying cause is being neglected. As a result, even if the pain goes away, the patient will likely have permanent weakness and functional limitations as part of the muscles are stuck in a contracted state and no longer take part in the contract release cycle like this. By going after the culprits of the dysfunction, there is rarely a need to take any of these approaches. I'm typically able to rehab patients successfully with no activity restrictions, splinting, or medication. However, I always work to correct any ergonomic issues that may be causing unneeded stress in the structures. There are four muscles that typically contribute to dysfunction the palm side of the thumb over here. Ponens pollicis, abductor and flexor pollicis brevis, and adductor pollicis. These are known as our intrinsic muscles of the thumb. And while their names are not that important, knowing their general location is. While pain will sometimes bring a patient for treatment, frequently there will be no pain, but a person will experience progressing grip strength decline decade after decade that most consider a normal part of aging, and this is most certainly not the case. Most often, it's as simple as releasing the trigger points and doing some basic strengthening activities to restore function. Let's jump into the Mountain Man method so you can see how it works. Prior to starting treatment, we want to do a very quick 30 second to minute warm up of the muscles we are about to treat. The warm up could be as simple as making a tight fist like this 30, 40 times, with the goal of bringing blood flow to the area, increasing the amount of pressure we are able to tolerate during the treatment, and helping the body heal faster by bringing resources to the area being treated. Next, we will perform an activity that slightly aggravates our injury. This is our initial test. We'll use this activity to track our progress and see if our intervention was effective or not later during our post-treatment retest. For the thumb, this will likely be an activity such as picking up a coffee mug by the handle, squeezing an object, opening our hand like this, or any activity that causes mild pain on the palm side of the thumb over here. Once this is accomplished, we will rate the discomfort from 0 to 10 and remember this number for later on. If we have no pain, but only weakness with gripping, we may try to lift an object that we normally struggle to grip or hold. In this case, we are looking to see if our ability to grip and overall strength improves post-trigger point release. Moving on, following our initial test, we will now map our injury. Mapping is fun and it's where we will find and mark the main culprits which are causing the dysfunction that we are about to treat. During the mapping phase, we are applying deep pressure and searching for tender points that recreate or increase our symptoms found during our pretest. Trigger points will almost always be tender when deep pressure is applied, so our bodies alert us with immediate feedback once we are on the correct areas. Knowing that these trigger points almost always form around the base of thumb over here or between the thumb and the index finger will make them simple to find, map, and treat. Now that we know about where they are, it's time to use deep pressure to confirm our suspicion and map the injury. This tool over here is called the jackknobber, and it's great for treating the hands and the forearms as we can take advantage of leverage and treat in an efficient manner with minimal effort. If you don't have one of these, using the knuckle like this can also work really well, or any object that's rounded like this. All right, let's jump in and actually map an injury. So. When I'm mapping, what I'm doing is I'm scouting the area where I think the injury is with deep pressure and I'm confirming whether it's there or not. So in this case, I've got my palm of my hand and what I'm going to do, I already know they're going to be somewhere around here. I strained my thumb the other day during grappling and while it's a very minor one, I want to treat that and not let it turn to something much more major. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna put deep pressure. Now I'm just rolling through the whole area and my body is gonna alert me when I actually end up right on the trigger point as it's gonna be a bit uncomfortable. So I can feel right here I've got a trigger point. I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna put a mark right there. You could do it with a pen or even better, a surgical marker. Same thing. I'm gonna roll around, I'm gonna to continue to scalp that area. Let's see, is there anything there? This muscle all feels pretty healthy. And right there I find another one. Let's put a little mark there again. The rest of the muscle in this area feels very healthy and I can tell that because I'm putting deep pressure and there's just no discomfort on the muscle. The other area, and we see this a lot when the thumb gets kind of sprained back like this, is between the index and the thumb. So I want to just check this out and see if I find anything there. In general, when we're treating a trigger point, our goal is to compress it between two firm surfaces. So my tool is one, in a lot of areas of the body, the shoulder, the neck, I've got a bone that's on the other side that I'm compressing. This is all soft, so I've got the tool on one side, I need a firm surface here. The knuckle can be very handy for that purpose. And what I'm going to do, same thing. I'm just going to have my knuckle block on this side. I'm going to roll around. Do I find anything in there? Feels pretty good so far. And right there I found the little one. Now these are small, but I felt it happen during practice and I'm just going to address it right away so it doesn't turn into something bigger. So right here, I've got my third one. So I have three trigger points that I found in here that are pretty small but present. Before we actually go into the treatment, I want you to think about I flex my bicep like this. I relax, but it stays contracted. That's essentially what a trigger point is. It's a muscle that's stuck in contraction and no longer lengthens and shortens and assists with movement. So with a trigger point, my goal is to, through manual compression, put it back into an elongated state so it can work again. Now I want you to think about a really firm piece of Play-Doh that's in a ball. And every rep of pressure we apply, it's going to flatten out a little bit more. If we bring it about halfway down over two days and then we stop, it's going to reverse. That's the nature of trigger points early on. But if we're consistent, every rep it's going to get a little bit smaller and if not too many days go by between treatments it's going to keep getting smaller and smaller until it completely flattens out and we reset the muscle at this point we're doing a little strengthening to ensure that it doesn't come back and just making sure we address what may have caused it activities that are straining it and then at that point we're really good to go let's actually jump into the treatment now so we got our three trigger points here, and I'm going to start with this one over here. So I get right on that, and even though I'm on the dot, I can say, okay, it's tender. Is it the most tender portion? And in order to get on the most tender, I'm going to do a little micro adjustment. So I do that, and I can say, okay, right here is the most tender. I'm going to now ease pressure into that. And I'm going to bring my discomfort around a 5 out of 10. Now, if you're real sensitive and you can only go to 2 out of 10 discomfort, that is no problem. And while it might take you a little longer to release, that is just fine. Most people, after they do it a few times, they go up for the higher numbers because it releases quicker and they kind of get used to that sensation as being a positive thing. But now I'm going to apply my pressure. And I'm going to hold for about 30 to 40 seconds here. What I'm going to start to notice as I do this, if I keep the same pressure, I go from about a 5 out of 10 to about a 4 out of 10 and keep going down. A more advanced technique that allows you to release this quite a bit quicker is I'm going to slowly increase the pressure throughout the 30 to 40 second hold so I maintain a 5 out of 10 discomfort the whole time. So I'm going to keep holding just like that. Now, done my 30 or so seconds, 
I want to unload the pressure but keep contact with the skin, especially if you're new to this so I don't lose my spot. And when I unload the pressure, what I'm doing is I'm allowing the nerve to reestablish the connectivity. And if I were to just hold here deep pressure for five minutes, I may temporarily put the nerve to sleep and I don't want that, not good. So I give it a five second pause, lets the nerve fire again, and I can go right back in it and be safe. So I go into my second rep, same thing. I'm gonna do a micro adjustment here. And I get right in the center, and we're going up to about a five out of 10. So I'm holding that. I'm slowly increasing my pressure. And I should notice each rep I do, I can tolerate a little more pressure, and that's a great sign. It means that we are being successful in releasing this. So I can use a little more pressure this time. So I get to about 30, 40 seconds. Again, I'm just gonna unload the pressure, but keep contact to the skin so I hit the same trigger point over and over again, knowing that each rep, it needs to get smaller and smaller until it's completely gone. So I would do a minimum of four reps, or you could think about it, a minimum of two minutes of pressure time per trigger point each time I do that. If I wanna go to four minutes uh, per trigger point, and I don't mind getting a little extra soreness there. No problem, I can do that and I can rehab it quicker. When I get injured um, in grappling and wrestling, which it's just part of the game, you got giant dudes yanking on your neck trying to tear it off. And uh, when that happens, sometimes I may come home and spend an hour, hour and a half on my neck. The next day it is so sore to the touch but I'm back to moving completely normal. I don't have any pain unless I touch it and I can participate in the sport. And for serious athletes, it's a game changer to be able to do that for yourself. Moving on to my next one. So I'm gonna take the tool. Again, I go on the dot, but then I say, okay, where is the most tender? And I've gotta make micro adjustments. I can say, oh, there it is. Same deal gonna apply my pressure just like this holding it there slowly increasing my pressure to uh, maintain that 5 out of 10 discomfort the whole time so pretend I did my four reps to each of those and when I grabbed say a ball like this earlier during my pretest, I had pain here. I can retest this now and see, did I make a change? And so I squeeze it and I say, yep, my pain decreased or no, it did not. If you got the right trigger points and your pain's been caused by trigger points, which almost always it is, at least that's what I see in my clinic, it's very rare it's not, you will feel immediate pain reduction. If that's the case, excellent. We are on the right track. We found our culprits and we just need to release them. Now say when I pulled like this and I brought my thumb to my index, I felt the pain um, right between my index and thumb, which I had a tiny bit there. So I want to treat this one now. Same thing, I get right on there. I've got my firm surface in the bottom and now I want my firm surface in the top. Even though I'm running the dot, I'm gonna make some micro adjustments till I get in the most tender portion. And my body is gonna alert me. And this is an amazing thing. Our bodies, if we put deep pressure in the muscle, our bodies will alert us if we're on the right areas. And this is why I have so many patients that great, get great at fixing injuries on their own that happen in the future because they just apply this concept. So right there, I can feel it. And I'm gonna apply my pressure. Again, I'm going at least two minutes of actual pressure treatment time total per trigger point per session. If I want to do more, excellent. So since I had a little discomfort there, I'm just gonna do my second rep and actually do a full second rep here. So apply it down again. I'm making a, a micro adjustment again because the trigger point as it releases, the center of it is actually gonna move very slightly. And I wanna be right on that tender point there. So 
So I get my five second pause, keeping contact with the skin. Let me go right into my third rep now. I'm on there. I don't know if you noticed, but I just slid a little bit and I fell off the trigger point. This is very common. It's gonna happen over and over again. Why did it happen? Because my angle is a little off. So I could say here, you can see me sliding off of it. If I just get a more of a 90 degree angle, now I can stay right on there and isolate that trigger point. Now I can apply my deep pressure. And again, the more advanced technique that's gonna release it quicker is maintaining that five out of 10 discomfort the whole time. And in order to do that, I've gotta slowly increase my pressure throughout the whole tier. So relax, and I'm gonna do one last one. Again, I keep contact with the skin, and then five second pause where I unload the nerve fire, make sure it's working properly, where I'm not short circuiting it in a sense. And I'm gonna go right into it again, and I can slide right off that, but I'm gonna get the right angle, and there we go. Apply my pressure. There we go. So I've got my reps in. Now I do my pretest as my retest to see, did I make a change or not? And this allows me to track my progress and see is my intervention actually working the way I want it to. So for me, it'd be resisting going in this direction. And I can say now I, I don't really have any discomfort there. Doesn't mean my issue is completely gone but it's gone to a point where there's no pain. I still can feel a bump there, and this is why I wanna come back to there a couple more times and get it smaller and smaller, just like the piece of Play-Doh we were talking about, because if I just stop when the pain's gone, it's going to contract again, and then I'm back to square one. But if I take it all the way till it's flat, and then I've done my strengthening, I'm good to go at that point in almost all cases. Moving on, if We've had this injury for a long time. Say you've had it for 30 years. You may have joint stiffness and we've got to address that. The cool thing about joints is a lot of times we can do it on our own. And all we're really trying to do with the joint is we're isolating a point. So I have my distal joint right here. And I could put one finger here, one finger here, and my thumb on the top of the joint. And say I was lacking extension, so that's extension there. And try and get a little bit more, so I have full range of motion. I block here, my thumb pushes down, and I start stretching those ligaments there. If I'm not able to bring it back and I'm really stuck here, and it's pretty resistive, I do these little pushes like this. So I bring as far as I can, and then little oscillations, boom, boom, boom. And I'm pushing past end range, so the maximum amount of extension my thumb wants to do. And as I do this, and I regain the full extension of my thumb, I might do like two minutes per joint um, each time I treat it until I have full range of motion again. If I do that, I'm addressing a um, issue that would likely cause problems come back in the future and also just limit my function. So I'm getting the muscles if I need to get the joint, which is not as often, but if it's present, I get the joint. And I'm addressing all these different things, including my strength. So by the time I'm done, I have a fully functional hand and my injury is fully resolved here. So in my case, I don't have any joint stiffness. It's a, an acute injury. So I don't need to do the joint mobs, that won't really apply. I know for me, it's gonna be these three trigger points here that I wanna do a couple more times until they're fully resolved. In addition, I'm gonna have my strengthening activity that I'm gonna to implement to help build up the muscle and the armor a, a little bit. I also wanna be thinking about for myself a test that 
will aggravate my thumb. So doing those two things that I did earlier are no longer uncomfortable. I don't want to stop there. I want to regain more strength, power, and decrease symptoms further. Because if I grab a wrist and I move like this, like I would do in wrestling, I can feel a little twinge. So this might be my retest here. I go like that and say, okay, I have a little pain right there. So for my next session, I'm gonna use that as my test and my retest. And for everybody, it's gonna be different. But the main thing is that we challenge, challenge, challenge until we have regained the ability to perform all activities that we want to. If you use this, it allows us to set the bar high for what we're capable of returning to. And what happens with a lot of people is they put these barriers on what they can do because they're trying to avoid symptoms rather than fix the problem and increase what those activities you can do are until you're able to regain function and do the things that you were doing in your younger years. And I really don't believe age is a factor in addressing injuries and I see it every day that people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s get back to doing all these things they did in their youth, including running. So it's just having a thorough process where we go through it, we track our progress, we have our test, our retest, we make sure that our intervention's working, we're consistent, and we take it to the point where we no longer have any problems there. The biggest mistake I see practitioners and patients make is stopping performing the treatment prior to being able to form all prior activities symptom-free for at least a week Stopping early will likely lead to the dysfunction coming back in the near future. Remember, a trigger point's natural tendency is to revert to the symptomatic phase early on, if not fully released, and this is why so many trigger point protocols fail to do anything but manage pain. Make it a goal to stop manual therapy once you're able to form all activity symptom-free. Can apply deep pressure to the culprit trigger points only experiencing pressure with no symptoms of discomfort and the strength has fully returned. I recommend performing the treatment at least three days a week for about 15 minutes per session to each injury. This will allow you to quickly resolve this function and move out of the common pain management phase and actually resolve the issue once and for all. The beauty of the method is when treatment is applied correctly, we're expecting to see improvements within every session. We are getting instant feedback on the efficacy of our interventions. During the pretest and the retest, making it easy enough for anyone to become great at fixing injuries with practice. While this will likely be a lot of new information, once this process is mastered, it's easy to apply it throughout the entire body and begin healing new injuries. My ultimate goal with patients is to teach the skills required to fix future injuries, giving people the gift to self-heal, and those who take time to learn the process typically become very good at this and avoid getting lost in the medical system for future injuries. We are at that time, and I would like to thank you for tuning in. As always, if you have a friend or family member who you feel could benefit from a different perspective, please share a link and invite them to subscribe. If you feel inclined, please like and leave a comment as it helps promote the video higher in the search results when people look for help rehabbing injuries. I look forward to continuing this journey with you. Until next time, take care.